Welcome. Today we're going to be looking at how a multi-level bill of materials is constructed within Acumatica. We're going to be focusing on just this first portion of the Acumatica manufacturing workflow, the bill of materials, and we're going to be taking a look at a finished good, a Keurig coffee machine. To understand the bill of materials, I thought we'd first start with the actual inventory items so that you understand how they're built and configured, preparing yourself for building out the bill of materials. I've already taken and created a quick filter on my stock items list to bring up just the items that we're going to be focused on today. We're going to start with the Keurig Model 450 and see that that's a finished good. Finished good is made up of sub-assemblies and some component parts that we just purchased. The sub-assemblies you can see here, the printed circuit board, the base unit, and the reservoir inlet. If I go to take a look at a specific item, let's say just the flathead screws here, we can open that up and see that it was created as a component part. Here's where you set up whether it's a finished good, a purchased item, a sub-assembly item, and so on. When I selected my item class, Manufacturing Purchased Items, Acumatica filled in much of this information for me. And then I can go out and change those things that are unique to this item, such as I purchased this by the box with a hundred in a box. To see where I use that material, I'm going to go to Bill of Materials Used, and I can see it's used in the base unit, the reservoir inlet, as well as some other items in my inventory. If I select multi-level, it'll also bring up the fact that it's used in the Keurig. Although it's not used in the actual final production of the Keurig, it's, it comes from the sub-assembly items. If you're familiar with stock item and inventory within Acumatica, you'll know that there's many tabs across the top. You can set your replenishment, whether you need to have a min-max to make sure you don't have an uh, out-of-stock situation. You can set that up here, add your safety stock, reorder points, and more so that the materials requirement planning will take this into account. If I look at the manufacturing tab, you'll notice there's no bill of material ID because this is a raw material item. Let's go back to our inventory. And take a look at one of the sub-assembly items. In this case, let's look at the base unit. This item is a sub-assembly that goes into the reservoir. I've set it as a sub-assembly item. I'm going to go to Manufacturing, and you'll notice here now I have a Bill of Material ID number for building this base unit. I'm going to click on that, and we'll go take a look at the Bill of Materials. Here's where you define the Bill of Materials when you're creating the base unit. I've added work centers. Work center 40, 70, 100 for cutting forms and inspection. I can have setup time associated with it, how many units I can run per hour or period, machine units that are being used, and so on. Down below in the cutting section, you'll see I have materials being used, sheet metal and black dye, pound and ounce. I've also got steps associated that tell what to do at each step. I have the tools associated with it and the overhead. In this case, I'm charging for floor overhead and administrative overhead. All these items are set up by you in areas like this. The work centers, the overhead, the tools, and the machines. You create the ones that you want to use and the associated values with that. If I went to tools, for instance, you'll see that's where the barrel mold was. Also, I could have the soldering iron, voltage meter, any tools, the minor tools that you use. 
can have charges associated with unit costs and track that to know as you use it over time if you're recouping or costing it correctly. Okay, let's go back to our bill of materials here. And we're looking at the building the base unit. In this case, there's I've got the sheet metal I mentioned. At the form level, I'm using the drip tray and those flathead screws we looked at earlier. But if I really wanted to take a look at the bill of materials, there's several ways to do that. I can go to the visual BOM. Here you can actually see each of those details by their dependent steps in the process. First thing that has to be done is cutting the material. I can show that here and then forming it. A multi-level bill of materials won't make a lot of sense because this is the beginning level that we're talking about. And there's strictly one level here. Four items that have to go into it plus labor, giving me my total cost. But if I were to jump over now to a finished good, such as the Keurig, here you see I have two steps, the assembly and the inspection. The materials used at the assembly include raw materials, such as the filters, the reservoir, and the housing, but also the items I've built, the reservoir inlet and the printed circuit board. The reservoir inlet included the base unit that we just created. To take a look at that, again, we could use the visual BOM, or I can go to the multi-level and explain how that expands out a little bit. I'm going to use the costed version again. Here you see the reservoir inlet consists of a base unit, but when you indent over to the two that you see here, that's the material that went into the base unit, which rolls up into the reservoir inlet. So level zero shows the items that I'm including, the pump, the printed circuit board, and then just the materials we mentioned, the filter, the reservoir, and the housing that get rolled up at the final stage. Over here, you can see the bill of materials involved with that, the base unit, O2 was where we built the base. O4 is where we put it together into the reservoir inlet. You can click on those and jump directly to those particular bills of materials to review them as you need. At the reservoir unit, again, the base units included plus a pump and a wire harness. So just reviewing, let's go back to our items. I'm going to go to my inventory. And you've seen how each of these items, the component parts, have been built into the subassemblies. Those subassemblies are assigned into the Keurig model, along with additional purchased items, such as the filter through the reservoir. And that's your bill of materials. There's so many ways to get access to the, depending on what your needs are, that when you're ready to go into production, let's go ahead and go into production order maintenance. Here's an order that's planned for a Keurig. I simply click on that production order, and I'm able to see the references. In this case, it was ordered by a customer. I can see the events step by step as I move this through the process, and the totals that are planned for labor, materials, fixed overhead, even the three cents for our tools. If you're interested in more information, Certainly give us a call or contact us through ASWIUS.com. We'd love to talk to you.